mutual funds, and index funds. And go! Oh, you got to read this. Look at this. 31,312 companies had filed for bankruptcy in 2022, fewer than any other comparable period going back to at least 2010. You ever see this logo before or this store? Sears. It was a big deal in the 20th century. Sears got interneted. In the 20th century, doing business through a catalog was a big deal. They used to mail everybody. It would be delivered by the postman, and it would show up at people's doorsteps. People would take the Sears catalog, page through it, and then place an order by phone and get it delivered to their house. Sears be like, we don't need the internet. We got a very strong catalog. Well, guess what? The internet disrupted the business of Sears. And take a look at this revenue chart of Sears. Think of revenue as like total sales, not including the cost of making the product, but total sales. Yeah, Amazon took over. Walmart even took over. Sears did not evolve, and they are dying right now. They're about to die. Sears is not a mutual fund. Sears is not an index fund, but it had an individual stock. Now let's look at Sears' stock price over time. Had you invested at any point in this period, your investment would have gone to zero. Well, 10 cents. As of the time of making this video, the Sears stock price is 10 cents. The reason that I'm including Sears as an example is a lot of people did not see this coming. And if you ask your grandparents, ask your parents how big Sears was back in the day, you know, they'll vouch for that. They'll be able to say, yeah, that was a significant company. On the flip side of Sears is Amazon.com. I think you know that's a pretty significant company. All of the packages just efficiently delivered. Pretty soon you're going to see drones in the sky delivering packages. But you know what's interesting? If you had invested $100 in Amazon.com in the year 2000 and $100 in Sears, which again, it's 10 cents now, you would be far ahead because of the growth of Amazon since then. So two stocks, you're not getting one. You're, they're both kind of in the same industry, Amazon and Sears. Sears sold everything. It's like a walk-in department store that it's like going into an Amazon store. It had everything, but they depended upon catalogs. They depended on catalogs and walk-in traffic in their stores. And then there is Amazon. It gets delivered to your door, everything you could imagine. Now, back to the point. You buy those two stocks together, you wind up ahead. You wind up ahead because you are diversified. You people overuse Google anyway, so let, let's go there. Diversify. Make or become diverse or varied. Vary means a lot of different types of things. And what you want to have in the future is a diversified portfolio. Now, look at this. A non-diversified portfolio. You see Amazon in there. Well, Amazon's a great company. What's the problem? The problem is, like I said before, nobody saw what happened to Sears happening. Everything is more logical in retrospect when you look back. What? Uh, Mr. K, what's a portfolio? That's a good question, and I forgot to mention that. A portfolio is a list of stocks that you own. Th this is great information, Mr. K, but I thought this lesson was on mutual funds and index funds. Well, it is, but you have to understand what diversification of a portfolio means first in order to appreciate what an index fund or a mutual fund can give you.
What are mutual funds? Presented by WallStreetSurvivor.com A mutual fund is a collection of stocks, bonds, cash, and other securities that are managed by a professional. Generally, people buy mutual funds because they want a simple way to invest in a diversified portfolio with the security of knowing that someone will be watching it. Here's an example of how a mutual fund works. Here's Will. Will has been investing for a long time with consistently awesome returns. People are always asking him for investment tips and financial advice. So Will decides to start a fund where he will manage and invest for people. He registers with the authorities, gets the approval, and sets up a mutual fund. He calls it Will's Fund. Because Will is such an awesome investor, he is able to convince 10 people to invest $1,000 in Will's Fund. Each investor owns one share of Will's mutual fund. Each share is worth $1,000. This is referred to as net average value. With the cash, Will invests in some stocks and bonds and leaves a little left over in cash. This portfolio is referred to as his assets under management. Will also takes a small percentage of the fund as his fee. This is called the asset under management fee. Let's fast forward three months. Will has made some really wise stock decisions. He was able to grow the portfolio from $10,000 to $11,000. Because he made an additional $1,000 and he has 10 shareholders, each of Will's friends will make $100, bringing the net average value of the mutual fund to $1,100. Will's fund is an example of a close-ended fund. He raised the money for his fund through his friends and is not accepting any more funds from outsiders. If one of his friends wants to sell their position, they would have to trade it to another investor. Mutual funds are traded on the stock exchange. There are tens of thousands of stocks to choose from globally, and the choices can be overwhelming. Many people choose to invest in a mutual fund to have a professional invest for them. You would have to do your homework on the fund, such as the returns year over year, how the manager has done is very important. Also, you want to see that the fund is diversified. In other words, it is not just investing in one stock, it is investing in many and good stocks. Now listen carefully to this. It is important to remember that mutual funds charge fees. How do you think the manager gets paid? They get paid based on how much it grows plus the fees. So you're going to be losing on some of that growth. And people really didn't like those fees, especially in years when the mutual fund went down. And that's when index funds became popular. Funds that track a market index, such as the S&P 500, are known as index funds. Index funds include both index mutual funds and index exchange traded funds, or ETFs. These funds typically use a passive investing strategy which means their objective is to deliver returns similar to an index of investments. However, index funds usually deliver returns that are slightly lower than an index due to fees associated with these funds. Fees are inevitable, but they're lower on index funds than they are on mutual funds. In this video, we'll discuss how index funds work, identify some of the indices these funds track, and examine benefits and risks associated with this type of fund. Simply put, index funds are built to have a similar performance to that of a major market index. This means they tend to be diversified in securities across that index and include a number of investments. There are many market indices and index funds that follow them. For example, if you want to invest in U.S. stocks, you might invest in a fund that tracks an index like the S&P 500, which follows the 500 largest stocks in the market. You've heard me repeat again and again and again in this class. If you don't know what to invest in, invest in the S&P 500 index fund. The funny thing is a lot of mutual funds out there have majority stake holdings in the S&P 500. In other words, they know that everybody is looking at that as a measure of success or failure. Did you beat the S&P 500? Did you get lower than the S&P 500? Well, how do you assure that you come close? You invest in the S&P 500. That is the big secret of Wall Street. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, which includes 30 large cap industrial stocks. The NASDAQ 100, which follows 100 large cap technology stocks. Or the Russell 2000, 
which tracks 2,000 small cap stocks. For international stocks, an example of a widely tracked index is the MSCI EAFE, which includes large cap stocks in developed countries across Europe, Australia, and the Far East. For U.S. bonds, an example of a widely tracked index is the Barclays Capital Aggregate Bond Index, which includes a mix of government bonds, mortgage-backed securities, and corporate bonds with different maturities. As you can see in these examples, index funds can track different assets, including stocks and bonds. There are even index funds that follow commodities, currencies, and other assets. But regardless of which type of asset they track, an index fund still has its risks. Put simply, index funds are exposed to the same risks as the index they're following. For instance, if the S&P 500 declines in value, then the index funds which track it will follow suit. An index fund that tracks bonds is at risk if interest rates rise and bonds decline in value. Some investors are willing to accept these risks and choose to invest in index funds because of the potential benefits they might offer. A primary benefit is the typically lower expense ratio, which is the ongoing cost of investing in the fund compared to actively managed funds. As the name implies, actively managed funds use an active investing strategy. This means that they frequently buy and sell investments. This typically results in higher costs or expense ratios and can be a drag on a portfolio's performance over time. Because index funds are passively managed and simply track an index, they generally have a low portfolio turnover, which means they infrequently buy and sell investments. Infrequent buying and selling typically translates into low expense ratios. The low expense ratios of index funds can possibly lead to more growth when compared to the higher expense ratios of similar actively managed funds. Let's look at an example. Suppose an investor purchases $50,000 of two funds that both grow 7% per year before expenses over the next 30 years. The funds are similar in all respects except expense ratio. Fund A is an actively managed fund with an expense ratio of 1.2%. This fund would grow to $271,356. Fund B is an index fund with an expense ratio of 0.2%. This fund would grow to $359,838. That's a difference of $88,482, and it's all thanks to a low expense ratio. The low cost of passively managed index funds can make a difference and is a reason index funds may outperform actively managed funds over long time periods. This is why some investors take the, if you can't beat them, join them approach and use index funds to simply track market indices. In closing, I'm going to challenge you with this. Now, we saw a column uh, B right here, a non-diversified portfolio. If you only invest in Amazon, that's one company right there. A diversified portfolio, I've got 25 great companies listed right here. But look, I only have one thing listed here, and I have it under a diversified portfolio, the S&P 500 Index Fund. Now, I have one thing listed, but this is actually a more significant list than this. That's 25 companies. This is 500. Very soon, in upcoming lesson, I'm going to teach you how to buy a stock, how to buy a mutual fund, how to buy an index fund, how to buy a bond.